Our Sunday Gospel reading presents to us the eighth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, when Jesus encounters the man who is possessed, the demoniac. And of course in that account, Jesus drives out the demons, this legion of demonic forces that are present in the man. Before we think about the meaning of this event, we should just first remind ourselves that Jesus doesn't treat the man as though his possession is um, a symbol, a metaphor. Jesus deals with the man directly that he is possessed by real demons. It's extraordinary that we even need to say that. So far has the world travelled from the truth of God, the reality of Christian teaching, that so many people are willing to take on board the, the psychological theories and ideas of our modern world that they then interpret these events as somehow symbolic. Oh, this is really about a psychological condition, or really this is a metaphor for something else. No, let us remind ourselves, Jesus confronted demonic forces. The demons responded to him and he drove them out. We cannot run away from the reality of the spiritual forces around us, acting in our lives, influencing us, longing to drag us away from salvation. If we pretend, if we ignore the spiritual reality, we are very vulnerable to it. But the man who is possessed, of course, is in a frightful, terrible, hideous condition. He injures himself, he cuts himself. In another account of the possessed boy, we see the boy being thrown into the fire. The demons seek to damage, harm, injure even the, the physical well-being of the person who is possessed. But there is a condition that is even worse than this. St. Gregory Palamas says to us, whoever disobeys God, whoever turns away from God and refuses to repent, belongs to Satan. Let us think on that for a moment. Whoever continues to sin, who chooses to sin, who chooses not to repent, belongs not to God, but to Satan. St. Gregory Palamas warns us of this because he says, when we choose to refuse to ref repent, what we are doing is reshaping ourselves reshaping ourselves according to the the image and likeness set before us by Satan not by the image and likeness of God we are rejecting the the very nature with which God has created us when we refuse to repent and so we set we put ourselves St. Gregory Palama says in a worse condition than even those who are possessed it is almost hard to believe that there could be a worse condition. But the demoniac, when he cuts himself, when he harms himself, these physical injuries, St. Gregory Palamas reminds us there is an order of injuries with, that is far worse than any physical injuries that the demons can cause the possessed man to cause himself. Injuries to the soul. We wound ourselves, we, we injure ourselves spiritually when we sin and refuse to repent. St. Theophan the Recluse says to us that there are two things. We must either not sin, or if we sin, we must repent. This is the only way to salvation. None of us is capable of not sinning. So therefore, every one of us must repent, lest we fall into a condition worse than the man who is possessed. There is so much about it that is worse. When the man who is possessed throws himself around and froths at the mouth and speaks terrible things, his behavior, his appearance, his very appearance is frightful. It disturbs. But those who refuse to repent, their injuries, their wounds, their condition can go unseen. It can be an invisible condition though far worse. And St. Gregory Palamas says to us, let us remember, when we give ourselves to the demons this way, we may enter an eternal condition. 
the man who is possessed, St. Gregory Palama says, will be freed at death, or may be freed at death, depending on how he has become possessed, of course. But possession is not an eternal condition. However, St. Gregory Palama says to us, if we shape our soul in such a way by refusing to repent, this condition that we have entered into will continue on after death, into eternity, into judgment and eternity. Our refusal to repent is to embrace Satan, is to embrace evil, is to give ourselves to everything that is opposed to God. But let's think about the story again. When Jesus encounters the man, we see in the demons a panic. They panic, they, they withdraw from him. They're afraid of him. They're afraid of Christ because, of course, first of all, they know who he is, they recognize him. But he has the, the power and authority to drive them out, to do with them as he wills for he is God incarnate. And confronted with the holiness of God, the demons shriek out, they are terrified. But this story reminds us that just as Christ has the power and authority to drive out the demons from the possessed man, to heal him, so too he has the power and the authority to heal every one of us of those sins and passions that have entered the very depths of our soul. Those sins for which we have continually returned, those sins that have become habits and passions, Christ has the power to deliver us, to heal us, to bring us to completion, to wholeness. We can be healed by repenting, by confessing, by trusting in Christ's power and authority over everything, everything that we are. When someone enters into this demonic condition, when they refuse to repent, when they are formed and shaped according to an evil pattern, the harm that is done may of course be to their own soul but also to other people around them. We can lead other people into sin. We can weaken other people's resolve. We can shake their faith. We can do all kinds of spiritual damage to other people. And the opposite is true. When we are healed, when Christ enters us and restores us, and we begin to repent and begin to be transformed, the light of Christ that enters us, that begins to illuminate us, also changes the people around us. We don't always have to share our faith just in words. It is more effective to be changed, to be transformed, to allow Christ himself and his presence in our lives to touch other people. People can see the change. They can see Christ's presence in whatever small form or way. Let us be changed that other people may benefit from the change that Christ brings to us. Christ Christ brings transformation to the very deepest parts of ourselves. So, this encounter then, in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, it is a reminder to us, yes, first of all, to recognize the true nature of the demons. We may say, why would God even allow someone to be possessed? This awful condition, why would God permit this? St. Gregory Palamas answers this, he says, when we see the possessed man, we recognize truly the, the evil condition that following evil, following the demons, leads us to. It reveals their true purpose, their true nature. Evil is seen for what it truly is, and it enables us to make a true choice. Will I choose to follow this evil, or will I repent? And of course, again, St. Gregory Palamas says, it also enables us to see the true authority and power of Christ in action, to build our confidence, our trust, our faith in Christ. 
as frightful as it is, it serves God's purpose. Even the demons, when they try to commit evil, God's providence is such that his will may be done. His goodness will come from everything. And let us see how willingly every one of us does indeed give ourselves to evil. This is a hard thing to recognize, a hard truth to, to be willing to face. Look within ourselves, hear our conscience. What is it I struggle to repent from? What is it I refuse to repent from? What sins, what temptations do I still cling to, even though my conscience speaks out? Even though I know that I am joining myself to evil, secretly, in this hidden way, may I see it, may it come to light. May I bear it before Christ in confession. Let us see truly, truly be honest and recognize how have I joined myself to evil? How have I allowed Satan to shape me secretly? Those parts of ourselves that we wouldn't dare reveal to anybody around us, we know. We know the shame. We know the depth of our sin. Let us trust. Christ can shine his light into that darkness. He can bring healing. He wills that we be restored, but he doesn't destroy our free will. We have a choice. We may choose to give ourselves to sin, give ourselves to Satan, or we may struggle and overcome these passions, refuse these temptations, and when we fall, and we fall often, let us get up and again and again work and struggle and repent. But let's do all of this without despair. Even when we face and see the, the true evil, the true damage, the true harm that we have done to ourselves, that we continue to do to ourselves, let us not never despair. Despair is yet another temptation. It is another trick of Satan. It is one of the ways that the demons will try to separate us from faith and hope in God. We must give thanks. Give thanks for all that God does, but also especially for his healing, his restoration. Give thanks for what he is doing in our lives, the way that he is changing us. When we repent, we must give thanks for his mercy. We repent and he forgives us. Let us give thanks for this and for the wholeness that he brings a wholeness that is eternal.